October 25, 1956, Meyer Siegel was leaving Stratford County Superior Court where he had just spent hours defending his business, Siegel's store, and the right to open for business on Sundays. Two weeks earlier, Siegel was served a restraining order that forced him to close his Central Avenue store on Sundays. The restraining order was the result of a suit filed in Superior Court by the Dover Retail Merchants Association and 17 other local businesses, who maintained Siegel's was in violation of the state's blue laws, which prohibited stores from doing business on Sundays. The suit maintained Dover businesses suffered the loss of revenue and goodwill, while Siegel's racked up more than $100,000 in, quote, unlawful sales. After leaving court that day, hopeful that the injunction that shuttered his business on Sundays would be lifted, he went straight to a Central Avenue store. Siegel's store was massive and sold a little bit of everything, from clothes, toys, ammunition, hardware, and food. But when he arrived at the store a short time later, he was distressed to see thick black smoke and flames ripping through the building. Meyer Siegel immediately dropped his head into his hands and began to weep. The store had been open for business when the fire started. Some customers had reported seeing a black, sticky substance seeping out of the fluorescent lights, followed by sparks. Customers and employees were all evacuated, but the fire grew quickly and proved difficult to fight. In addition to fire crews from Dover, firefighters from several surrounding communities were called to assist as well. Their work was slowed by the large and growing crowd of spectators who gathered by the hundreds to watch the building burn, despite efforts by police to move people away from the scene. It was also reported that low water pressure hampered the firefighters' work, a claim the mayor and city manager refuted, adding that a new well at Willen Pond had just been built and the Garrison Hill Reservoir was only 500 yards away. The fire's ferocity, which generated an enormous amount of heat, burned through and melted firefighters' hose lines, blew out the building's large glass plate windows, and caused ammunition and paint cans to explode. The intense fire also burned through the lead sheathing of phone lines and poles, cutting phone service for Dover, Summersworth, and Rochester. As firefighters worked for hours to contain the blaze, the last item to burn was a new sign advertising the store's most recent sale, which boasted a huge inventory of new stock valued at more than $75,000. Exhausted after several hours, firefighters were finally able to put down the blaze. Ray McKenney, a Dover firefighter, was taken to the Wentworth Hospital, now Wentworth Douglas Hospital, to be treated for smoke inhalation. The damage to the store was estimated at $250,000, well over a million dollars today, and a complete loss. It would be two years later, in August 1958, before the store would reopen. Sadly, just a week after the store opened for business again, thieves sawed through the roof of the building and broke into a safe, making away with $4,000 in cash. The theft, though, wouldn't deter Meyer Siegel, whose reopened store would thrive and expand in the coming years. And was open for business on Sundays. Mm-hmm.